comes the goop shower. Here's my app version and here's my firmware. And then if you want to power it off, long press. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Today we're gonna to do a vehicle technology review and unboxing of a Zenfox dash cam. So this is the Zenfox T3, it's a three channel. So you have a front facing, a cabin facing, and a rear facing satellite camera. It can do quad HD, full HD, and full HD simultaneously. It has infrared interior camera so you can see yourself in pure darkness. Uh, high quality Sony image sensors. And the big benefit of this one, which my previous dash cam was a Vantru model and it did not have Wi-Fi. So that is the big benefit here is that you have Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz so that if there is an incident, you can quickly download it to your phone or if something funny happens or weird happens, you can share it. Wow. Versus having to take the SD card out, putting it in a computer, offloading it, editing it, cutting up the clips, all that stuff. So having Wi-Fi is a big benefit for quick and easy sharing. I do like that a lot. It records front, rear, and cabin views for full driving positioning. Okay. This is a touchless wash and it does a pretty cool chemical bath and the big goop. You know, it doesn't use hot wax anymore. It all seems to be like ceramic coating friendly type washing materials. It's the first time I've ever brought the truck through here though. Here comes the goop shower. Get slimed. With all the cameras running, see how it does. All right, and that's my car wash. Now I'm gonna go pull over, turn on Wi-Fi, and download the clips so I don't lose them. Because uh, unless, if I, if I don't lock these clips, which I don't really wanna lock them, and forget to download them, they will get overwritten. Although I have a fairly large SD card in here, 128 gigabyte, but when you have triple cameras running at once, all at 1080p or higher resolution, uh, it'll fill itself up pretty quickly. So let's pull over and uh, Get these clips. Sony sensors infrared dual band supports up to a 256 gig micro SD card and they're just saying that it's an ideal choice for ride sharing. I have had this for quite some time and I got you know delayed in doing a review on it. I am going to be using a SanDisk 128 SD card. This does not come with it. I just purchased it to use with this model but uh, I'm about to go on a long drive today and I want to make sure that I have protection. I'm going to drive on a holiday and that is the biggest benefit. Even though I have a brand new 2022 vehicle, which you're going to see soon, it doesn't have a dash cam, even though it has front forward cameras, it has auto high beam. It can see the cars coming, it can see the road, but it doesn't record them. So that's the benefit here. So here's your uh, front facing camera, here's your cabin camera. Uh, it must have a mount that then mounts on the windshield. So it's gonna mount on the windshield this direction. Then you can point your cabin camera how you need it. And your front facing camera points at the window. Cool, nice design. We'll uh, get it hooked up and play with it. SD card on this side. Inserting the SD card is just on the side here and it is pins facing towards the screen. And we should just click inside. There you go. SD card installed. Rear camera uh, power is a a uh, mini USB, an older connection. So this one, even though even though this is a fairly new 2021 model, it still uses some legacy connectors. I don't mind that though, because this is a stronger connection than micro USB. And uh, while I would prefer a USB-C, this is fine. Here's the rear camera module, which 3M sticks to the rear window and that allows you to position and get a rear camera view. See what else is in the box here. Uh, big chunk of foam. Here's all the documentation. I've never had this out of the box. I've had this for quite a while. Extended warranty card. Here's the user manual of how you use the device. So we will go over some of that later, but here's the controls. All the controls are in uh, 9, 10, 11. So it comes with car charger, USB cable, rear camera, 3M mount sticky. Oh, it even comes with a card reader adapter, which is very nice of them. Here's how to install it. We'll go up to the car to do the installation and show you how all of this works. 
hooks here. Oh yeah, you get plenty of cabling. You even get a trim tool. This is this is very nice. So you get an SD card reader for uh, for if you do not use Wi-Fi and you want to be able to pull off the SD card and read it. Uh, that is a nice little addition, as well as a trim tool so that you can peel back your trim and feed the cabling because that's the thing about using a rear camera and the previous dash cam that I reviewed also had a rear camera that I never ended up installing because it had a really loose poor connection uh, this should have a much more robust connection and uh, so I am going to do the triple camera array for this one was all the mounts so here's all of the uh, sticky mounts for how you would attach it to the window two mounts so that you can have your mounting permanently attached in two different vehicles and then you can quickly move the dash cam between them so that would be two separate mounts for two different windshields now you do have to permanently well semi-permanently stick this to your glass uh, so it's not a suction cup system like my other dash cam that I have as well as you do get a USB so let's just power it up and make sure it works before we go out through all of the effort oh I thought for a second that I didn't have this. This is the power cord over 12 volt DC plug socket with a USB pass through, which is very nice. This is the way I will be powering it. But uh, in a late, at a later date, you may want to, this is very cool, hardwire kit for dash cam. So this is a permanent hard hardwiring kit, a optional accessory. This does not come in the box with it. But if you do want to permanently hardwire in your dash cam, you can do that with an accessory that they make. And if you have a vehicle that runs on a higher voltage battery system, you can adjust it from that switch. This is very cool. Okay, so we'll take all this stuff out to the vehicle and start installing. Okay, this is the vehicle I'm going to be installing it in, a new 2022 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. And while the vehicle does have front cameras already, it doesn't record. So we're going to install a dash cam for added safety. I'm already running into a bit of a fitment issue where, where I would like to put this is right up in here. But if I do that, if I get it up in here, it says that it wants it behind the mirror. If I put it behind the mirror, then all the controls are hidden behind the mirror and I can't get at any of the buttons. So I would need to put it way over here and uh, it just, it blocks a lot of my view. So um, we'll figure out something, but yeah, a little bit unfortunate with this here because this is the factory camera and it would need to be on either side of it. And I would like it to be on this side, but then I can't get access to any of the controls. All right, I've just powered on the dash cam for the first time and we're getting a card error. Please format SD card. There we go. I want to format SD card. Where's that? This is supposed to be the setup menu. This button sticks. There it was. Okay. All right. Now we can get into format. There it is. Okay. Format. Okay. All right, now we'll be able to use the system. Boot delay, that's why boot delay is off, but it still has a, still has a bit of a delay. Car number, date stamp is on. Time zone, we'll do Minus five, 11.37, it knows from the GPS, which is awesome. I do appreciate that. You never have to set date and time because it knows it from the GPS. That's great. GPS is on, Wi-Fi is off until you need it. Speed units and KPH, GPS info stamp, all info, sure. Okay, so we appear to be working now. Now that the card is formatted, I just powered it off, powered it on again, and now we are recording at 2K30, 1080p30 in the cabin area where you can see the camera as well as the front camera. So the reason why I'm powering it up like this before I mount it is so that I can see if it actually, uh, if these dots here get obscured by the front camera when I mount it. Need to tie up the tidy up the wires later, but here's the Zen Fox on the rear window. I've got it on the rear glass just before the slider because this metal slider slides out. So I wanted it as center as possible without it being on a moving piece. And uh, I'm just going to do the peel now, peel off the camera lens. And there's a little switch on the bottom for if you have it 
you know, inverted or whatever way you have it. The little switch here allows you to change it to be inverted or not. Anyway, so I'm just gonna point it down at the box. Now I have a box cam from this view. Just need to adjust it from the front screen, from the outside view. I did stick it to the uh, to some of the diffusing dots here on the window. But this is my... Wow, it's hard to film in here with the bright white. I did end up installing it behind the mirror, and then if I want to get at the controls, I just need to pivot this rear mirror out of the way, and then I can get at all the controls. So let me just turn the ignition on for a minute so we can power this on. There is one thing I've noticed is that it does take a too many seconds to turn on when you know i could i could have already had the car in drive started driving away before it's actually up and running and now it's recording so i'll take a look at how many seconds that was but it's too long um it's not terrible but it's too long i can be driving i could have driven away i could have hit something in an intersection before it ever starts recording uh power button is here which is a quick toggle to turn on and off the display and the display does turn off after a set amount of time and i cannot find an adjustment for it all of the settings on the screen are that it shows you're recording what mode you're in it's ev compensation it's g-force mode if it's gps is on if it's wi-fi is on the time of recording and then these two here are showing the uh, the display so if you click quickly quickly hit this button here this is your main front display here's cabin display here's rear display and then back to all three again this is your settings and mode button if i just hit this it takes a picture if i hit this it will stop recording if i hit ok locks the file if you hit this button it turns the mic on and off so red button off for mic if you want to quickly stop recording you hit the record button every time it stops recording it beeps you like that which is a nice indicator because sometimes there's been a couple of bugs where it started beeping at me for no apparent reason and it wasn't recording so i just went in and hit the record button and then it started recording again and if you want to turn on the wi-fi on and off you long press this and that turns on your Wi-Fi mode. And then I'll show you the app on how that works in a minute. While that is on, it doesn't record. So it stops recording while Wi-Fi is on. And then if I want to start recording again, I'll just hit record. And now recording is on with Wi-Fi on. And I would have to long press this again to turn Wi-Fi off. Anyway, for the most part, you're not going to be having to deal with any of those menus. And it's just on automatically recording all the time. And it's been good. I really do appreciate and I've kept the documentation in here just to learn how to use it, but I really do appreciate that it came with this trim tool, and I have used it. I've by no means done a professional installation, but all of the wiring, this one is power, this one is for rear camera, goes up along, under, over this mirror visor, and then it goes into the trim. And so I've peeled away all the trim, so it goes down this panel, under the door sills, up and around, up and over. Mostly, mostly for the rear camera i've got it going all the way down under this kick plate and then up and under the floor mat for so i have the camera powered up from this center bin here this is the camera plug and uh, i've just got it going through as best as i can route it so when you first look at the vehicle you don't see any wiring unless you look up in here that's where the wiring is but for the most part this visor is flipped up and it's a fairly clean installation and from the front of the vehicle this is where the camera is sitting here where it's fairly invisible when you're looking at the vehicle you don't really notice it has a front dash cam on it and even though it's on right now the only way to know that is by quick pressing the power button and then you can see that it is on and still recording press this button here to turn it on to wi-fi mode so it's looking for a wi-fi signal i'm just going to go into wi-fi and it should automatically connect because i have connected before it's a little finicky, connect anyway. We've already given it access. I don't know what it's complaining about. Connect the camera, okay, now we're connected. And now we're in its remote live mode. It's beeping because it's not recording because it thinks you're gonna change some settings, which isn't terrible, but uh, it works fine. Uh, for settings, you go in here, here's the default setting. Video resolution, there's only one choice. 2K30, 1080p, 1080p. 
I have most of the things on default. I've turned loop recording down to two minutes just because if you're gonna download a clip to your phone, if you have it on five minutes or four minutes, the files are really big, like two gigabytes. So a one minute or two minute loop recording time is actually how big the clips are, not how long it takes before it loops. That's just how often it cuts up the clips. And I did turn on WDR, Wide Dynamic Range. Uh, I didn't test footage before and after. I'm assuming Wide Dynamic Range is better. G-Sensor, have it set for low sensitivity because on medium and high in this truck, it was it was locking files when I hit bumps. And date stamp is on. Bit rate I have set to medium. There is a choice here, maximum, high, medium. The file sizes get huge. If you go maximum or high, I think the quality on medium is fine. Uh, infrared LED is on auto. This infrared LED was set for on automatically by default and I set it to auto. Color during the day and black and white at night. Rear camera mirror is off, notification sounds are on. Most of all the stuff is on defaults. GPS, GPS timestamp, model mode, screensaver. Frequency was set at 50, I changed it to 60 because I live in North America. English, you can format the SD card, which I did need to do the first time. Wi-Fi channel and the custom name stamp keeps resetting. I have previously told it I want this to be on five gigahertz because it downloads the clips faster. And I have told it that I don't want this name on here anymore, but it's refusing to save. So even though it says it saves, where'd the L come from? So even though it says it's saving, every time I tend to reset this, it doesn't work. But here's my app version and here's my firmware. So there very well be newer versions available because I'm still on 1.0. I haven't checked for newer. This is two years old firmware right now. There's likely new stuff that has fixed those few little bugs. You cannot update the firmware through the app. You do have to download it from your PC and put it on the SD card and do a firmware update manually. So that may be a future video about that. But that is the app. See, how do I get back? I'm hitting back. Take me back, there. You get your live preview, which actually works pretty well. And you can switch the cameras, take a screenshot, start and stop recording, and view your files. When you view your files, it stops beeping. You can see what is all files, what are locked files, as well as you can download anything, but you cannot delete a locked file from here. The only way to get rid of a locked file, even though there is a delete option, it will not let me do it. Error code locked files. So you cannot delete a locked file even manually. And here's how many locked files I have, which I didn't intend to do. So those will be stuck there until I reformat the card. It does three separate recordings for each camera. So here's my front display. This is, you know, talking to the camera, doing the recording I'm doing right now. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty good quality actually. And you can preview pretty well. You can scrub through during the preview. I do like that. So you can see if it's the clip that you really want. I do like this thing. It has GPS, it has Wi-Fi, and the quality seems to be very good. Besides a few little quirks in usability, um, it's been reliable. It's only ever really crashed or failed to record on me once. And when it does that, it starts beeping like this. And then I'm gonna long press this to turn off Wi-Fi. Now Wi-Fi is off. Recording stopped, recording on. You get used to it. And then if you want to power it off, long press. And that's the chime that you get every time it turns on or off. Okay, so that's the Zenfox T3 dash cam. I do like it. Uh, certainly there are different styles and configurations that Zenfox makes. If you want one that has a bigger screen, is more of like a, a rear view mirror replacement, they do make those as well. But I like this one. It seems to work very well. I like that it has Wi-Fi, GPS, and the quality uh, seems very good. And I do like that I've got a rear camera mounted up, so if someone hits my truck from behind, I can see who it was. And the forward uh, and the cabin features are very nice as well. All right, guys, I'll put links in the description if you're interested in getting one of these. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new on here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching.